one of the things that I had to figure out mostly through trial and error is how to wire random motors that you might find like the uh, ones I have here in front of you. And just as a quick rundown, this is a, a AC blower motor, uh, two washing machine motors. This one comes out of an electric wood chipper. This comes out of a treadmill and that's a vacuum motor. With that being said, there are many different types here. That one's brushed AC. This one is a DC motor. That's a AC. Uh, the rest of these are all AC, single phase, and um, they are brushless. What's important about single phase motors is they have a start capacitor next to them. And usually you can tell if it's brushless and single phase because it'll have this big bulge on the side which has a capacitor inside. Now I'm not going to open that up but you can read all that information right here on the label. It says a quarter horsepower 1700 RPMs it gives you a amperage but here it says phase one as in single phase. With a motor like this you need a start capacitor and basically what that does is it creates uh, a temporary additional phase like a second phase and that allows the motor to start turning in fact you know that there are problems with your capacitor if the motor comes on and it hums but it doesn't spin so either if you wiring this yourself it means you may have wired the capacitor wrong or something's wrong with the capacitor just as a quick example this is a microwave capacitor they come in all different shapes this one came with this washing machine motor and you'll notice that it's on a wire, it's not mounted to the motor. So in washing machines, I've found that often it's mounted somewhere else in the machine. So you got to be sure that you get that before you throw the rest of it away. Another star capacitor right there on the side in that bulge. And DC motors and brushed motors don't need star capacitors. The simplest one is this guy. So let's jump right in it. For the most part, you'll find that these motors are already wired, but if you don't have the advantage of that, I'm going to take these out here. You can look in the back, and I don't know how well you can see that, but here, before it got scratched off, this used to tell you uh, which two red and black to wire your wires to. And so literally all I did was have this short cable here for demonstration purposes that I wired up. So this is by no means pretty. But basically it gives me a on-off switch. It gives me a circuit breaker just in case things don't work out the way I hoped. Uh, and I have a ground wire. And then these two guys. My hot and neutral. So basically... We're gonna, uh, you probably can't see this, but I'm just putting these on red and black. You can see the red, hopefully that's not too dark, red leading into this terminal and black on that terminal. And then my ground wire is usually grounded to the body of the motor. And this guy's ready to go. Here's my power. But I'm not going to plug this in until I clamp this guy down. And just like that, we got a working motor. One more thing before we move on to the next motor, and that's speed control. With an AC brushless motor, single phase, uh, there's no good way um, to externally control the speed of this like say through voltage control or something like that, it's best to use pulleys. Uh, there's a centrifugal switch. In fact, if you listen carefully, if you hear that clicking sound, that's the centrifugal switch engaging. And if you uh, try to say lower the voltage or something like that, you're gonna draw more amperage and uh, cause problems with that centrifugal switch. And I'll put a link um, which will describe what this centrifugal switch does and talk to you more about why you need one. So it's best to, if you want to adjust for speed, you're going to need some pulleys to change the speed of this guy. 
starts with the multimeter. So you're going to take this guy. Everybody's is a little different. I'm going to set mine to measure ohms. And under that, I have a setting to uh, beep when it senses continuity. Now, um, without getting into that too much on this video, it's worth looking into just so you understand what's going on. But um, continuity is what we're looking for. And this is all I did. Started with the tab in the corner. And I see which ones it has continuity with. So nothing on the white, nothing there. And if you hear that beeping, this corner tab, which doesn't have a color, and the brown have continuity. So you're going to need to make a list. You'll do this over and over. Nothing on the blue, yellow, but definitely red, right? And then white, same thing. Nothing on the brown. All right, so white and blue, yes. And nothing on white and red. But we have white and blue and white and yellow. So anyway, you'll make a list, and then we'll create our wire next. What you see here are the notes that I took. These are all the ones that had continuity between the wires for the two different motors. And you'll notice that some of them don't do anything, even though they had continuity. So don't worry about that. You just won't use that winding. I've actually went ahead and measured uh, with a tachometer the speed. Now, this one allows you to wire for different speeds. As you can see, there's a high, a low, and an extra low. But the other thing is, how do you know which one of these is the start winding, as opposed to all the other ones, which are a run? And what you need to do is break back out the multimeter. We're going to set our multimeter to measure ohms. So you're going to see it bounce around as it auto ranges to figure out what the ohm reading is. Let's start with the one that I know is the start winding, which is yellow and black. But obviously it doesn't matter where you start. So it's bouncing around. And you can see it says 7. It's about 7 ohms. Now I'm going to go to the high speed winding, which is white and blue. And it's bouncing around a little bit. And it settles on 2 ohms. So you can see there's a huge difference in the resistance between uh, 2 ohms, which is what we just read. And as it auto ranges, now it's reading 7 ohms. And that's the major difference. The start winding has a thinner wire and it has a higher resistance. And so it's going to give you a higher reading there. Now we can check the other ones just to uh, increase your confidence here. So we're going to go white and purple. White and purple is the low speed winding. Give it a moment to get it to settle. And you can see that one's also 2 ohms. And then we have white and orange. And that's settling around 2.5 ohms. Now this wiring, just so you know, is temporary. This is not how I would wire it if I wanted to uh, run this on a regular basis. But I threw this together for just for this demonstration video. Now this is a vacuum cord. Uh, the vacuum was rated at 15 amps. It should be fine for this washing machine motor. And as you can see, again, that's kind of ugly. But what I really want to show you is this and this. Now, you need to wire these in parallel. And all that means is the wire coming from the wall, I've got my two cables coming from the wall, and those two cables are split. The pair, both are connected to this wire, and then also connected to this wire. Now, following this side, we have our start capacitor. This one is uh, 233 to 280 microfarads, uh, 110 VAC. This is the one, after looking online, is the one that comes with both of these washing machine motors. So that's what I got. All right. This wire, as you can see, is split. One side goes across the capacitor, and the other side just goes back. Uh, so you can have your, your live or your neutral. It doesn't matter. One needs to go across the capacitor, and the other just goes straight to this end. Now, the side with the capacitor is the side you're going to wire across the start winding. The other side is going to go across your run winding.
one more thing about these capacitors they pack a serious punch uh, and when they're charged even after you unplug it from the wall it still has stored energy so the simplest thing to do is without this plugged in you just take a screwdriver touch the two leads together of course that screwdriver should have either a plastic or a rubber handle touch those two leads together and that'll discharge the capacitor across itself just be careful because it can really hurt you all right we're going to take this across the start this is my start capacitor it needs to go across my start winding make sure your motors clamp down because it will jump off the table and let's plug it in that's it you got a running motor. Here I just wanted to show one more example of one with the capacitor on the outside. This one is a 3500 RPMs, three, quarter, three horsepower motor. I got this out of a wood chipper. Uh, but again, it's single phase and you need that star capacitor to get things moving. Here are my two wires uh, for power and the star capacitor is wired on the inside directly you don't need to do anything to that and you ground again to the body of the motor we're going to use the same harness we used earlier we got this one wired up you can see my ground wire is hooked into the ground there and then uh, just like we did with the other one There you go. All right, this one comes out of a vacuum. It's got quite a bit of kick. This is the switch. The This was a part of the foot switch that you step on to uh, turn your vacuum on. So I left all of that wired. The best thing you can do with this, most of the time, uh, a brushed motor like this, the wiring is very simple. So it's best to whatever machine you take it out of to just leave it like it is. So there's really not a whole lot to it. You just plug it in, and if there's nothing wrong with it, when you push your foot switch.